In this video, I'm gonna show you five plumbing tools every homeowner needs to have in their house every day. Now think about it, if you're a homeowner and something happens, do you know where your tools are? Or do you even know what tools you probably need around? Now, what I'm gonna show you today are five tools that are not very expensive, and there's something you really need around your house, maybe in a drawer, maybe in a tool bag. So first of all, let's make it really easy. Everybody needs a flashlight. Now, why is that? Well, if the power goes out, if it gets dark, if you've got a leak up under a sink, up under a cabinet where you can't see real well, having a flashlight is something that literally can make it where even if it's the smallest drip, maybe you can see it. If you're shining water up under a cabinet behind a lavatory, maybe on the faucet, and water's beating up really slowly, a lot of time you can see that reflection and that'll let you know you've still got a leak. Wipe it off with a rag, piece of toilet tissue, anything at all. Try to get all the water up, shine it up there again, or wait a few minutes. Another trick too, if you think you've got a water drip, take a piece of paper towel or toilet tissue, put it up under it, and come back an hour or two later. See if anything has dripped on it. If so, you know you've got a leak you need to fix. But a flashlight, if power goes off, do you know where one is? Can you find it? Relatively easy. Having a flashlight and knowing where it is and be able to get to it when you really need it, now that is important. Another great thing to have is a multi-screwdriver. Now, when you need a Phillips screwdriver, you can always find a flathead. When you need a flathead, you can always find a Phillips. What I like is a screwdriver that you can actually change out the blade on. Why is that important? Well, there's a lot of different screws around our house. Sometimes they're Phillips, sometimes they're flat, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. If you get a multi-screwdriver and you've got different tips that you can change out, it really comes in handy. That way, if you're working in a spot where you need flat and Phillips, or maybe you need a different top head, some of these come with some great heads that aren't very common. But it's nice to have a screwdriver around that literally you've got what you need and it's easy to swap it out. Another good thing is if you've got power tools around, sometimes if you can't find the bit you're looking for, these work perfect. Make sure you put them back though. There's nothing worse than going to grab your multi-screwdriver and realizing you don't have the bit that you're looking for. Make sure y'all hang around because the very end, the very last number five product is the one that can save you tens of thousands of dollars. So next, a pair of adjustable pliers. Why are those important? Well, there's a lot of things where maybe you're getting under a sink and you need to tighten up something just a little bit, but you don't have a wrench big enough to fit it. What I like are the adjustable pliers that literally you change the size. If you've got a big piece of pipe or something like that you need to grab or a big nut that you need to get on, this will make it really easy. And on these particular ones, you press the button, slide it down to where you want it, or you get on something smaller, just squeeze it up, tighten it down, and it won't push back open. Now, adjustable pliers are great, but I wanna tell you to be careful if you've got a chrome nut that maybe you don't wanna scratch the surface up on. You may want to go to either a smooth jawed adjustable plier or a crescent wrench or a spud wrench or even a strap wrench. But in case of an emergency, this is a great thing to have around the house. And I know I say emergency, but even if it's not an emergency, maybe you've just got a slow drip. This is something you may be able to get in there and get onto it and take care of the problem. Okay, number four, an adjustable wrench. Now, these are nice because you may not have an entire set of wrenches around your house, and that can get really expensive. Now, you wanna make sure that if you're buying an adjustable wrench, you buy a good brand. You wanna make sure that you buy one that's not gonna slip. How loose is the jaw? And when you tighten it up, does it stay there or does it keep loosening up? Now for me, this and the adjustable pliers are probably two tools that I use all the time as a plumber. Now, even the screwdriver, even the flashlight, but these are the most popular tools that I think any plumber carries. Now, one thing I will say is they make different size of each one of these, the adjustable pliers and the adjustable wrench. So this one is about a 10 inch, and actually you can get these as small as four, as big as 12, and you can go actually larger. But as a homeowner, an eight inch to a 12 inch is probably gonna be perfect. It's gonna put you right in that right size where the tool's not so big that you can't get in there and work with it, 
flat. It's also small enough. You can hold it in your hand. You're not going to have any problems with it. Adjustable pliers, the same thing. You can get some little bitty ones, which I've got. I mean, I've got a full assortment of them in my tool bag because depending on what it is you're trying to get in and work on, kind of depends on what size pliers or wrench you need. Now, the medium size, 10 inch, 12 inch, somewhere around in there on the adjust. 10 inch to 12 inches, somewhere around in there on the adjustable pliers is great. It's normally not going to be too big and not too small. That's what she said. It's going to handle most of the problems you'll have around your house. Now, one of the last tools, and this may be the most important, is a meter key. Now, there's different kinds of meter keys, but this is the kind of key that literally unlocks and opens the meter box in front of most people's homes. Now, there are other types that actually have, say, the meter key built on the end of it. I think those are fantastic. And some valves inside the meter box, you want a wrench like this to where you can turn it off. Why are these so important? And why do you need to know where they're at? And why should you tell your family where they're at? Well, what if you're not home? If you're a single mother and you're working and your child calls, which happened to me, which I'll explain in a minute, if you're a single mother and your child calls and says, hey, the water heater's leaking, we've got water in the living room, what do I do? Well, correct answer is turn the water off. But how do they do that? That's where these come in great. If you don't have a shut off valve right in front of your house, which guess what, I highly recommend, then they need to go to the meter. So most meters have a key to open it and close it. And most of them, you'll either need a wrench like this, or an adjustable wrench to actually get on it and turn it, depending on if the valve is sticking towards the top or if it's out the side. Here's what happened to me. I came home when I was in middle school after school one day, walked in, we had converted our garage into a living room. So I literally walk around the corner and step down into about four inches of water. Now remember, I'm a boy, I'm in middle school. I thought this was pretty cool. We had water in our living room. Well, probably not what my parents thought were great, but Anyway, I go get on the phone. I call my mother and say, hey, mom, look, there's water here in the living room. This is cool. And she's like, no, it's not cool. I need you to turn the water off. Well, I didn't know how. So this is one thing that's really important to me is to teach people how to turn their water off. So you go out to the meter, you open the lid, you pull it out, you take a wrench and turn the water off. Now, there's a lot of people that watch this that tell me we're not allowed to get into the meters in our municipality. And I completely understand that, but I'm telling you, if my house is flooding, I'm turning the water off, the city can get mad at me. You contact your city now and find out, are you allowed to get into the meter box? Are you allowed to turn it off? Or do you have valves out front? And whichever way it is, does anyone else in your family know how to do that? And if there is a special tool to get in there, do they know where it's at at all times? I'll tell you what's neat. Walk into your house today when you get home, or get up from watching this video and go in there and talk to your spouse, talk to your husband, talk to your wife, whatever it is, and say, hey, do me a favor, go turn the water off right now. Or ask them, do you know how to turn the water off right now if it was an emergency and water was pouring out the ceiling, because it can happen, would they know how to turn the water off? This is something that it really is a great idea to show your kids, show your spouse, show anybody in the house, that way if there's ever a flood, they can save you a lot of money. Now, the only other tool that I carry that I think is one of my favorites is a multi-tool. Now, I carry a Leatherman, but there's so many different brands out there and there are some really good ones out there that will do a lot of different things. Find out what multi-tool is best for you and if you don't carry it around with you all the time, at least put it in a drawer, hopefully with these other tools, where you know where it is. Now, if you're a plumber, electrician, or HVAC tech, if you're somebody who's a residential service provider, do me a favor and leave a comment down below and let me know what tools do you recommend every homeowner have. And if you're a homeowner and you don't have any of these tools or you've got a bag set up a lot better than this is, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what it is. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.